Disney presents The Wonderful World of Color. And now we present The Three Lives of Thomasina. you a story about a cat, a very exceptional cat. The heroine of this book, Thomasina, by my friend Paul Gallico, who's a great cat man, as you may know. Now, for me, I'm a dog man. Oh, I like cats, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've had cats of my own. I like all animals. <laughs> but I must be honest with you, I've always had a special feeling for dogs. But cats are pretty special too, you know. Now, if this one could talk, he'd probably say, can you jump ten times your own height? And if you humans, in proportion to your size, were as fast as I am, you'd be able to run how many miles? 100 miles an hour. And do you wash 20 times a day? And can you lick the back of your neck? <laughs> you know, the cats had quite a place in history, too. Thousands of years ago in Egypt, they were worshipped as gods. It was because the government in 17th century England had so many cats destroyed that the Great Plague of London was such a terrific disaster. There weren't enough cats left to keep down the rats which spread the disease. And you small fry, <laughs> do you know that your brain is the nearest thing biologically to the human brain? And your face muscles are almost exactly like humans? You cats are the only animals that can frown or smile the way we do. <laughs> the great difference between the pet dog and the cat is that the dog gives its owner everything of itself. But the cat will give you just so much and no more. They probably feel superior because they're the only domestic animals who can fend entirely for themselves. Perhaps that's why our, our country here has a law that there's no such thing as legal ownership of a cat. They're so darned independent. They won't be owned. Well, our story is about a very special cat. So let's get on with it. The Three Lives of Thomasina. Who is the most self-reliant animal made since the world began? Who can be the most defiant animal known to the world of man? Born with emerald eyes, so cold, so warm, so wise. Within her kingdom lies the world's arena. Do we need to ask more than that? You must know now it's a cat, but a very important cat at that who's called. Thomasina. Thomasina. What are you thinking now? Thomasina, what makes you so highbrow? For I do think it very odd If you are an Egyptian god That the wee little mouse runs in and out his house Each time you blink or nod Thomasina, though you may love to run Thomasina, don't go too far from home. There are beasties in the garden who would never accept your pardon if you left the jungle yard in which we play. Thomasina, don't ever run away. Thank you. 
family, whom I'd adopted when they first came here. They started off by calling me Thomas, but when they, well, got to know me better, they changed that to Thomasina. Humans are funny that way. That the McDoeys are a happy family is entirely due to me. I made them what they are today, although I had to be murdered first. Here's the scene of the crime. Inverarach, in Scotland, in 1912. And this is Mr. Andrew McDewey. From a cat's point of view, even before my murder, he was a most difficult man. Believe me. His wife had died some time before he came here. So there was just himself, and Mrs. Mackenzie, his housekeeper, and Mary, his daughter. I'd moved in on them a few days after they arrived, and on the whole, I got on with them very well, though mostly because of Mary McDewey. She appreciated my rather special qualities from the start. Thomasina, there you are. Of course, I had this sort of thing to put up with every day. Fussed over, treated like a doll, being dressed up, and over a fur coat, too. Everything that happened to me from here on was due, in a way, to a blind man and his dog. Here they are now, Thomas and Bruce. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Mary. Say good morning to Thomas and Bruce, Thomasina. Good morning, Thomasina. She's not in a very talkative mood today. I have the same trouble with Bruce here. He can be very reserved at times. Isn't that right, laddie? But what would you do without them, you and me? Where are you going? Oh, just to get some tobacco from the pipe. Mind how you go, Thomas. Oh, Bruce is my eyes, lassie. Come on, say goodbye to Thomasina. Be good now, Mary. Thomasina, it's rude not to answer when you're spoken to. Hello, Geordie. Oh, what have you got there? I found him down by the lock. I think his leg's broken. He can't help us from or anything. Oh, he looks fierce. Doesn't he, Thomasina? Ah, don't touch. Why don't you go and ask my daddy to cure him? Oh, I don't know what you think he would. My daddy can cure anything. Dogs and cows and cats and lambs and pigs and I, but frogs. And frogs. Everything. You take him in there. Oh, I'm not allowed in the surgery. You go, Georgie. Well, if you say so. How old is this dog, Mrs. Lyon? Fifteen years in the pit. I've had him since he was a puppy. The year my husband died. He's been ailing a wee bit this past year, but not so sick as this. Oh, he's very old. Uh, the kindest thing, I'd better have him put to sleep. Oh, no. 
Ah, now you can see how bad he is with the asthma. The poor dog can hardly breathe. He's in pain, Mrs. Luggan. But you can't put Robbie to sleep, Mr. McDewey. I wouldn't have come. He's all I have in the world. Couldn't you give him a wee bit of medicine to tide him over till he's well again? Mrs. Luggan, there is no medicine that can make him well. He's very old, he's in great pain, and his life is a misery to him, can't you see? But I can't lose him. What would I do without him? Poor Rabbi. Uh, be fair now, it's yourself you're pitying, Mrs. Lager, not the dog. Oh, dear, I don't know what to do. Well, I've told you what I think is for the best. Now I've told you, it's up to you to make up your mind. Very well. I suppose... If he is suffering, you'll be gentle with him. He won't feel a thing. He'll just go to sleep. Will he? Fifteen years. Poor Rappy. Poor Rappy. Are you doing the right thing? It's for his sake. No, no, there'll be no charge. Just leave him here with me. Mr. McDewey says there's no cure. He's to be put away. Oh, oh it's a shame. It's a shame. No cure for him. If it was my dog, I'd want a second opinion, I'm thinking. I'll go with you, Annie. Good day to you, Mr. McDewey. Yes, sir. Hey. Who's next, please? Please, sir, Mr. McDewey. Oh, who are you? Jody McNabb, please, sir. I'm a bitter friend of Mary's. I found him down by the north. He hurt his leg. Can you make him better, please, sir? Uh, no one can cure a hurt frog, Geordie. And you put him back where you found him. But he might die. Oh, could you not mend his leg, please, sir? No, nature's the only doctor can do that, laddie. Come on, now. Come on, off you go. I'm busy. You've lost another customer, Andrew. Hey, there's Geordie. What have you been doing in there? I took my sick frog to Mr. McDewey. Oh, I've got to say that. He wouldn't even look at him. As he's going to kill Mrs. Lagan's Rabby. Kill him? Rabby? Aye, ah, I heard him say so. It's just like Grandfather says about him. He's only good with farm beasts. He's not interested in people's pets. A frog will die if he can't help or swim. And I'm not going to let him die. What are you going to do then? Cure him by magic or something? Come on, Jamie. Why don't you take your folk to the witch woman living in the glen? She's supposed to do magic. Well, why don't you? Our mother says the witch woman's crazy. We're not to go up there. Oh, you're just afraid, the pair of you. I'm not afraid of anything, and neither's Geordie. Are you, Geordie? Right, let's take the frog to her. All three of us. I dare you. Very well. Geordie, we'll all go. You want to get your frog cured, don't you? We don't have to tell Mother we went. I was only joking. No, you weren't. You dared us. I think you're afraid to go. Me? Afraid? Let's go now. Come on, keep up with us. to go on that? No. Well, come on. Go home. When you've got 
cut this frog? What about your frog? Put your box under the tree there. Ring the bell. I go on, Judy. We'll wait for you here. No, no. Judy, go on. to be cured by the mad witch in the glen. I of mute and hair of dog, give me the power to cure the frog. Yes, Magic. Off to my cauldron. Where's my broom? drum in the house and she bangs on it and things awful weird. Aye, and there's all kinds of animals there. Did she fly in a broomstick? Well, not exactly fly. But you have one, though. Why aren't you afraid? Well, I wouldn't recommend just anybody going up there. You were afraid. You made Johnny take the frog to the tree. That was you. I wasn't afraid. You must be awful brave. I am. A bit. took his frog that you wouldn't show to a witch who does magic and flies on a broomstick. Yeah, you could have turned him into a frog and it would have been all your fault. <laughs> Mary, Mr. Andrew, I'm waiting for you. Come on now, inside, wash your hands. Thomasina! Come on, Thomasina. Dinner time! Come on now, inside, wash your hands. There's a good girl. That's enough about witches. Mrs. Mackenzie will tell you the same as me. There aren't any outside the storybooks. Oh, yes, there are. You've been making up more of the fairy tales. I didn't make it up. There is a witch in the glen. Oh, the glen? She bangs big drum in her house. Lives with wild animals and rides a broomstick. Jimmy McNabb told me he and Judy and Jordy saw her. Now, Mary, it's a poor wee soul called Laurie McGregor that's rented a croft in the glen from Mr. Peddy. She spends most of her time weaving on a hand loom. That's the drums your friends heard. Know what you say. She's a witch. She's a wee bit weird, that's true enough. It seems she's a lassie that doesn't mix with other folk. But mind, she's not been there long. Some of the shepherds in the glen say she has a rare way with beasts and birds and that. Now mind, Thomasina doesn't spill her cream. Cream? Oh, just a wee drop, Mr. Andrew. It helps her to see in the dark. She told me to. Didn't you, Thomasina? Yeah. You hear? I suppose you'd like me to go out and get my rod and catch your salmon. She says 
Mrs. Noble, she'd rather go to the store on market day and choose her own fish. Georgie's frog and Thomas Senior and me. That's all, Jill. Tomorrow yours, Julie. Mary, I'm Good night, yours truly, Mary. Slippers. I need it. to move in on people. She's just had a, had a night out and hasn't come back yet, that's all. She's been out all night before, but she's always come back. She climbs up the tree and gets in my window. What? She always has. It's our secret. Uh, certainly is. Well, I'm off to the side now. Be a good girl. Eat your breakfast. Don't worry about the pussy child. But she's lost. Thomasine is too clever to get lost. You do like her, don't you? Ah, of course. Would you do anything for her? If I asked you to? Promise? Ah, eh? Well, let me go and look for her now, please. You promise? You're even craftier than Thomasina, you wee monkey. <laughs> Sit up. Mary, you come with me. Oh, it's not Thomasina. But never mind, we'll find her. Joey, Mary! I found her! She's here, Mary! Oh, Thomasina, give it to me! I don't think anything's broken. But she's terribly stiff. Oh, poor Thomasina. I couldn't help it, Constable. He walked right in front of me. 
You're just here in time. It's Thomas's Bruce. Where is he? Steady now, Thomas, steady. He's fair crushed, sir. I couldn't help it, Mr. McDewey. Better get him back to the surgery. Quick. Bruce is my eyes, Mr. McDewey. Can you save him? I'll do what I can. Stay with him, Angus. He's in good hands now, Thomas. Now come on, you come with me. This is going to take a long time. I hope his heart will stand it. Are you ready? Conscious, but I'll send Willie round to fetch you here this evening. Bruce will know you then. And he'll get better? I'll be as good as new. It's a great skill you have, Mr. McDewey. And no one can deny it. There uh, now. What did I tell you? Come on, Thomas. I'll take you home. God bless you, Mr. McDewey. God bless you. His pulse rate's fine. I'll stay with him till he wakes. I never thought to see such surgery as that. Aye. And what you have to do now will be just as hard, I think. You have to tell the child about her cat. The shoe black tries his bread to earn, and would an honest penny turn. When mud upon our boots leaves stains, his ready help the good payment gains. The beef eater we see today. Daddy, Thomasina, is she better? She's out of pain, Mary. What was wrong with her? Let me go to her. She's better, isn't she? Mary, uh, listen. Uh, listen to me just a minute. You see, there, there are some things that you, you have to learn to face. Even if at first they seem a bit unfair. What is she? Thomasina's wound was poisoned, and she might have made other people's pets ill, even die. But you did save her. I, I couldn't, Mary. I couldn't. See, there are some things your daddy can do, and some things that he can't. What did you do to her? I uh, had her put to sleep. Th th there was nothing else I could do. I tried to understand, Mary. No! No, you said you'd make her better. You promised, you promised. Yeah. I'll never speak to you again. Mary, please. You promised, and he killed Thomasina. She's dead. <laughs> Don't be so sad. You'll do yourself harm. Look, I tell you what we'll do. We'll give Thomasina the best funeral any cat ever had, won't we? 
I, with the full service and everything. My mother's got just the right box that would do fine for a casket. And we could pick some flowers and have a possession like when old Duper was buried. And everyone in the village would see us. I, Mary, you'll wear widow's mornings and walk behind the casket weeping. And Danny here, she's going to be chief mourner. I can cry awful loud, Mary. <laughs> what now? Would I wear a hat and a black coat? Miss Mackenzie has one. I will all dress up and get everyone to come and... Uh, I know, Jamie's just learning the pipes. He's not very good at it. I can play but... Macintosh's lament. And all them a dress kilt with Mesquine do and Sparrow. And everyone in the street will say, there goes the poor Widow McDewey, a burying of our dear Thomasina. Foully done to death, God rest her soul. We'll see. Really? Aye. It'll be a great, great procession. You'll see. We'll go and get Thomasina now. Aye, come on. What are the children are burying the day? Mary McDewey's cat, Thomasina. My grandson Huey told me her father couldn't be bothered to cure its sickness. His own daughter's pet. Ah, well, maybe he was busy at the time. You know what we... Thomas's dog, and after all, it's a blind man's eyes. His own daughter's pet. It's hard to understand. Far enough. Put it here. Now get some stones and build a cairn for the grave. Now get the coffin up and put it down just there, you two. Now get some stones. That'll do fine. Now let's get on with the service. I'm going to take the service. It was my idea. No, you're not. I'm the oldest and I've come prepared. Brethren, friends and fellow mourners. Oh, go on then. We have come here today to bury Thomasina and to praise her. She was the friend of Mary McDewey here, who you all know. Uh, uh, well, anyway, there she is. <laughs> Shh, not yet. Hold your noise. Thomasina was one of the best cats in all our Galsha, And we all feel for our best friend and owner. Wish, not yet, not yet. There's no doubt that Thomasina was a terrific mouser, too. She had a few false eyes, but I won't mention them here. Uh, and her mortal remains will now be laid to rest. Did 
doing? Your heart's still beating. Ah, oh, poor thing. Didn't they know? You come with me. lives up in the glen. What? We all run away from her. Huey and Geordie and Jimmy and Jock and Annie. What's this nonsense now? And uh, what were you doing in the glen? And she is a witch. I've seen her. So there. Um, Mary, the, the kittens that Mr. Paddy's cat Amanda had are, are now ready to leave their mother. Would you like to come and choose one for yourself? Mary? Would you like to come... To Mr. Paddy's with me tomorrow and choose a kitten. Jamie McNabb can play Macintosh's Lament on the pipe with only nine mistakes. Answer me, Mary. Answer your father, child. But he's not very really good at Loch Lomond. This is ridiculous. This is a way of sulking just because... Don't you want your supper? No, I do not. No, who's sulking? And you can tell Miss McDewey that if she does want a kitten, she'll have to come and ask me. Everybody was real scared when they saw the witch, except me. I wasn't. I just looked at her and said, I'm not afraid of you. Give me a stop. You just do this. Eat your supper. Now you've made your father angry. No, I haven't. My father's dead. Dad, don't keep on about it so. That cat's funeral was nothing but a children's game. Not to some of us. I'm telling you. I've said it before and I'm saying it now. That Mr. McDewey is doing no good here. Now, don't interrupt me, woman. He's a townsman and not a Highlander. He has no feeling for animals at all. Come now, Granddad. Some of the farmers round... The farmers? Did you not hear that he made an order to destroy the whole herd of Ian McLaren's cattle... Because one cow was sick. That's the law. They had foot and mouth disease. It wasn't the law in my day. But it was only McDewey's opinion that they had it. And look at his record. Never mind the cattle. Annie Lagan's old dog, Robbie, he had him killed. He saved blind Tabitha's Bruce, though. Oh, aye, that was because everybody was there watching. That was just showing off. Now, Granddad, you shouldn't say that. Oh, the man that did what he did. And he wouldn't even take the trouble to treat his own daughter's cat when it was sick. He's no better than a murderer. It'd be a good thing if he went away. I, I'd make it too hot for him here, I'm telling you, if I was younger. So would others. Him and his newfangled science. <laughs> coming out today, she's in mourning. And anyway, we've got work to do. What work? Forming an anti mcdewey society to drive him out of Inverana. Oh, listen to him. My grandpa said he's no better than a murderer. Your grandpa? And he told me Mr. McDewey had two whole herds of cows slaughtered just because he thought one beast was sick. People are saying he ought to go, and I think we ought to join them. And what does Blind Thomas say about it? 
Oh, he's only one. Now, here's what we'll do. Me and you, Geordie. Morning, Miss McLeod. Morning. You're not thinking of taking your cat to Mr. McDewey now, are you? Why not? Oh, he won't bother with it. He doesn't care for anybody's pet. What? He'll just say it can't be cured and then kill it. Oh, get away with you. It's true. He even did it to his own daughter's cat. And Mrs. Rackham's dog, he killed them. I did hear about Rabby. But he was awful old. That cat of yours is younger than Mary's Thomasina. You take him in there and he'll just get his bottle of chloroform and... Just a minute, Harry, listen. We were just telling Mrs. McLeod, Mr. Wallace, about Mr. McDewey. You'd be well advised not to take your dog in there. I'm thinking of rebuilding my big size. You know, I've had two outbreaks of swine fever. I up to now. Have you spoken to this new vet here, uh, McDewey? Not yet. Is he any good? One of Mr. McClennan's cows had foot and mouth disease. And Mr. McDewey had two whole herds killed. That young Annie of mine took my best black shawl from my closet yesterday and threw it into ribbons in some game. Harry, I saw them. Playing at funerals, burying young Mary McDewey's cat. Mr. McDewey killed it. Killed it? I think as he did Mrs. Legum's dog. He kills things. He saved Damas's Bruce, laddie. Aye, because everybody was there watching. That was sure enough. He's an animal murderer. You tell me he killed his daughter's cat. He didn't like it, so he took his gun and killed it. His gun? Well... Oh, isn't that awful? Well now, Andrew. Glad I saw you. I wanted to work with you about Mary. I uh, did what you said. Asked her to come around and choose one of your kittens. But she'd have none of it. Nor me either. It's like speaking with a blank wall. To a child of her age, feeling is stronger than reason. You know that, Andrew. Uh, and grief is usually forgotten quickly, too. But the, the death of this cat, it's like an obsession with her. Well, she's something of a lonely child. Angus, would you do me a favor? Do you think you could have a talk with her? You might be able to reason with her. Well, I can try. I wish you would. She's at home now. <laughs> We are playing in the sunshine and not moping here indoors. Geordie McNabb and Huey came asking for you. Why don't you go and look for them? Oh, Mr. Perry, Mr. Andrew's not in. I was just passing by, Mrs. Mackenzie, and I thought I'd pay a call on Mary. Would she be at home, do you think? I'm here, Mr. Perry. Well, now, there you are. He was so quiet, I didn't see you. <sighs> Fair home outdoors. You're wise to stay inside. Would you mind if I sit down and rest a while? Yeah. Oh, I think the stairs are a grand place when you want to have a good think. You know, I was thinking just now about your Thomasina. What with my old cats, I get all mixed up remembering what yours was like. Thomasina, now, he was about... She. Oh, she, Thomasina. She was about, what, uh, so long? And uh, did she not have a wee square blaze on her chest? No, it was round. Round? Aye, now you remind me it was round, eh? Uh, but she did have three little white feet, didn't she? No white feet at all. No? Oh. But she had a... Pink nose, two black specks on it. I remember that well. No specks. No specks. Do you remember how she'd sit and look at you sometimes with just the tip of her tongue showing? When she was waiting to be fed. Yeah, when she was waiting to be fed. You see, Mary Thomasina isn't dead at all. Not really dead. Not when we can remember her together like this because she's alive in our minds. No. And as long as you can remember her like this, she'll never die. Just call her to your mind and she'll come. Even if you were to have another week after love. You know, I was saying to your daddy just this morning... My daddy's dead. I killed him. Did you, Ned? Oh. 
I killed him. I put him in a box. Flowers in it. We all took him up into the glen and had a funeral. Now I haven't anybody at all. Mary. No. I like being alone. 